recording. So, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I've been kind of been straining for new content lately. So I decided to shake things up by doing something that I've never done before. An unboxing video. Hello Internet, this is VoiceOver Kyle talking to you after I've actually built a projector to describe what it's like to build a projector because I had thoughts while making this that I could only articulate after the fact and um, yeah. I really can't wait to assemble this. And I don't know how I can make this simple unboxing video uh, you know, wistful and sad and melancholy and super depressing and super, like, doomsaying and... I'm sure I can find some way to depress you in this video. So anyway, let's open it up. So this year for Christmas, my family got me this neat little gift. A model kit of a working camera projector. Made by a company called Roker. You can get it here if you're interested. Roker. Interesting and smart. My brother Michael had found this neat little model on Jeff Bezos' corner of the internet after realizing that it would take too long to 3D print and assemble one himself because this is the kind of assignment you give yourself when you're an Eagle Scout with a degree in material science from Cornell. Okay, so I can remind myself of what this is supposed to look like. Incidentally, my brother is a very talented craftsman, having built these lovely pieces as past Christmas gifts for me and my fiancé, and I have no doubt that he could build his own film set if he had the time and resources. But whatever the knack for building things is, I didn't get it. Oh god. Um Yeah, I'm basically assembling a clock. This was a very bad idea. Um Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. But still, I get that zen feeling of devoting myself to a creative act, finishing the hat and all that. Sondheim reference. I am not an engineer. I, I studied theater. The model itself is made of various wooden pieces punched out of varying thicknesses of plywood, along with a motor with a light attached, some metal axles, with a lot of shafts here. Hardy, hardy, hard. A convex glass lens, and a strip of film with a little animation of Charlie Chaplin doing a dance at the end of modern times. Cute. No, bad idea. Grumble, 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 grumble. Content creation. Ugh. This is what I chose to do for a living. And I have to live with that every day. The projector has gears of varying sizes and thicknesses, and essential to the mechanism- Oh, this looks... interesting. Is the Maltese Cross, or the Geneva Drive, developed in 1896 by either this English guy or this German guy. I found conflicting sources. Oh, nice. It's called the Geneva Drive because the first models were developed by Geneva watchmakers and called the Maltese Cross because it looks like one. And this is what makes film projection possible. Oh wow, it's starting to look like something, isn't it? The cross turns constant rotary motion into controlled intermittent motion, allowing the crank to hold a piece of film still for a fraction of a second, in a smooth, jumping sort of way. This allows each frame to stay still just long enough for light to pass through it and to register to the human eye. Look at that. Or at least it would, had I not spent a good 20 plus minutes here somehow thinking that I had to put these little orange doohickeys on the 50mm rods to hold them in place, but that actually makes it constantly jam, so I end up having to fix my mistakes several steps after the fact, a lot. Just so much of putting things in wrong, or upside down, or I use the wrong lens of stick, or I smushed these tiny little doodads that I use for nails, or I spend 10 minutes trying to stick this thing on the end of the motor, which I know is supposed to interlock with the thing, but it took me so damn long to realize that I had assembled the crank wrong, so I would have to take that apart, so I grumble and do it. 
I should not be doing that. And also there wound up being a lot of dead silence as I assembled things, since I started out thinking that I could maintain banter through the whole thing, but I run out of banter when I realize how many moving parts are in this, so I shut up and content myself with just getting the audio of me putting bits together, but then I realize I'm constantly forgetting to assemble the pieces in the frame that I've set up, so I'm constantly focusing on the actual thing that I'm building and not the frame, so I'll quickly put my hands in frame, which will make for decent video, but it's awkward to assemble and I'm also fighting the clock because I can't find my camera battery charger, so I think that I have a limited time to film, and also I'm constantly having to disassemble the thing I just put together because I installed something backwards or upside down, or my fingers are too fat to put these things together, and this unfeeling camera is capturing my every failure, and what I thought would be a cute little assembly turned out to be a complex model with multiple moving parts that is really, 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 really easy to fuck up. <sighs> Made even more complex by the fact that I was trying to record myself building this with a DSLR camera from 2012 with 32 gigabyte SD cards, which only hold about an hour and a half of footage, and I didn't expect the total assembly time to top out at four hours. So when I hit the 90 minute mark, the first time, that meant I had to change cards midway through, and this also took so long that I not only ran out of memory, but also battery life. Forcing me to take a break to look for my lost battery charger, giving me plenty of time to ruminate on the absurd recursivity of the exercise of operating a camera while simultaneously building a projector, which not only serves as a fun little like film school rumination fodder, but also adds a layer of performance anxiety on top of performance anxiety as I realize the stress of not only building a working film projector, but needing to look good while doing it. I'm finishing a hat on a hat. Hey, Michael? Uh, dude, I love you, but were you really gonna build this thing yourself? <laughs> really? But seriously, this took so much longer than I'd anticipated. I'm almost done, I just need to thread the film. I took so long that my fiancé came out to spend time with me. Wanna be in the video? Wanna say hi? Hi! We're almost done. I'm gonna come to bed soon, I promise. I'll stop playing with my toys. It's a fun toy! It looks cool! It is, and it's very, very complicated to put together. Um, this isn't going through the way I want it to. Am I breaking your concentration by being here? No, no, it's okay. It's just, I've never done this before, you see, so. Well, this is the first time for everything. Yeah. Well, I guess that's part of the reason why I'm making this video. It looks cool as hell, though. Uh, will it? Thread. Yeah. I've never done an unboxing video before. Never had any reason to. Never had any appeal to me. But there is something interesting about them. Something fetishistic. Commodity fetishistic, that is. I'm gonna see if I can get a close-up of this. You can actually see... Switching between frames. Can't remember where I heard it, but I once heard unboxing videos described as a way to experience the ownership of a product vicariously through seeing the actual owner do the intimate work of packaging removal and assembling the product itself for the first time. And I get that joy. It's the joy of opening a box of Legos and building a set for the first time. It's getting to play with a shiny new toy. And that's what it is. A toy. I can talk about the model's sophistication and the complexity of the mechanics, but it's still a toy. I am a boy with a toy. I am a toy boy. I hate filmmaking so much. Why are we doing it? We should stop doing it. We do it because it keeps us sane. Ah, I suppose so. Sanity. Overrated. I agree. But that's always been part of being a cinephile, right? Or movie buff, or film ner What are we calling ourselves now? Whatever. Whatever we're calling ourselves now to make ourselves sound cool and mature. Let's face it, there's an inherent childishness to being into movies. Don't forget the famous anecdote when, upon first seeing the RKO backlot, Orson Welles excitedly called it the biggest electric train set a boy ever had. Yes, it's art, yes, it's important, but it's still a fun little magic trick that has a beauty in its simplicity. 
and sometimes it doesn't need any more intellectualizing than ooh and ah. So, here I am, ostensibly an adult, building my little model. Coming to terms with the fact that the heart of this medium that I love is still only a very simple magic trick. All right, let's test it out. For all the past discourse about what is or is not cinema, every movie lover has to come back around to the fact that we're still common fans. Fans of a neat visual illusion of simulated motion made possible by a neat little toy. Frank came off.